Only four out of ten kids want to go to school, but most of us want to do well at school. I think you can tell a lot about your school by the attendance rate, because if the kids don't want to come, you're probably doing something wrong. We had this wild idea that if students enjoy what they do, they might actually come to school more often, they might engage more deeply in school, and they might perhaps achieve more at the end of the day. That involved a major rethink of what teaching and learning was going to look like. We now run a much more competency-based curriculum, much more a sort of learning for life curriculum than we ever did before. It's a much more fun, enjoyable environment. And this is borne out by the fact that they're coming to school. We also get feedback from the KPIs, which tell us that we've got a lot of very happy children, which is what we're trying to develop. I think the students are really enjoying the fact that they're developing these transferable skills. They can see the relevance of these skills. And we're managing to fit the literacy and numeracy into that as well. And we're tricking them into learning, really. Levels of achievement are are hugely higher than they ever were before, from 25% to 63, 64%. Our A star and A grades are higher. Our level of attendance is one of the highest for a school in the same sort of category as Shireland. Ten years ago, overall the school had 82% attendance, and the current year seven and eight have record attendances in the history of the school. There are over nine billion questions asked on search engines every month. So who answered these questions before? One in five students create their own web pages. Kids and students are innately turned on by technology. They engage with it a lot better. Creating media-rich IT environments where they are able to access materials has really stimulated children's learning. They display a much greater degree of self-confidence. They are much better organised as learners. They are much more able to assess their own work and that of their peers. We find that the children very quickly become more engaged and motivated by what they're doing. Would we wish our schools, our students' futures, to go forward so still attached to a bygone age? By the time I'm 38, I'm more than likely to have had 10 different jobs. An expert says the 10 most wanted jobs two years from now didn't even exist when I was eight. That was only three years ago. As society changes and demands on us as individuals change, the sort of teaching techniques and learning techniques that we're going to have to apply will change. There is no right way of teaching that will exist for all time. I think the one thing we should never do when it's children's futures and possibilities is stand still. We've recognised that when our students leave school, they need to be able to work in completely different environments to maybe the ones that we've grown up in. So we're trying to bridge the gap between traditional education and the workplace by introducing the 21st century skills. So students are able to develop things like independent learning through personalised learning. So teachers are looking specifically at their students' needs rather than bulking all students together. By the end of a three-year study course, half the information from the first year will be outdated. You know, I learn best by interactivity, by doing and discussing. But I spend most of the lesson listening to the teacher at the front of the class. I think generally it, it's proven that actually you can be successful and still maintain the standards that you have by doing things differently. A lot of people fear that if they undertake large-scale change then there may be some risk to the results. You have to practice being brave, really, because otherwise nobody's going to move forward at all, and life is an adventure. The first conference I went to where I met the other 11 schools, all from different countries and from different governments and policy frameworks, and everybody was talking about the same thing and the same challenges about how we would prepare students for the 21st century. When they leave us and they go into the world of work or further education, Hopefully we are helping them to be well-rounded citizens that are going to contribute something to this world that we live in. We're being prepared for jobs that don't exist yet, using technologies that haven't been invented, to solve problems that haven't even happened yet. We have a particular vision of ICT in school, one which, in which students don't actually see they're using ICT because it's just a tool they use in their learning. The value of transformational resources is that it, it challenges your thinking. It gives you time to think around what might be rather than what is. What it also does is give you confidence that perhaps you're not quite so off the wall as everybody else around you thinks um, and that there, there are other people out there who are thinking the same things and struggling with the same problems even though they may well come from 
very different cultures and very different contexts. This technology actually helps you share. If I end up retiring being the only one who knows what I know, I won't have changed the system at all. And we are absolutely committed. We, we've got a responsibility to help as many students as possible. This has got to be about sharing. You know, if, if, if this technology actually only ever did one thing and it encouraged people to collaborate, it would be worth any amount of investment in.